Well, in case you didn't watch day one, it may be obvious that I'm recording these back to back. But I've already finished them a while ago, so I figured we'd just go for it. Okay, so we're continuing. Rust, AOC, 2021, day two today. And we'll be showing off a few more, you know, kind of cool things in Rust. I think you could solve it without doing these. Like if you were trying to reach top 100, you wouldn't write it like this. But I think I'm having fun just learning and exploring Rust. So I wrote it this way and I cleaned it up a little bit anyway. So we'll work through day two. Here we go. So day two, you're riding in an autonomous submarine now i guess it's got its own course and you just need to figure out where you're going to end there's basically three different commands that can happen you can say forward and a number down and a number or up and a number very cool so forward basically moves you horizontally x down increases the depth and up decreases the depth this is like a classic thing because we're in a submarine so they're just like laughing at you every day that one at the times you're going to switch around the numbers but that's too bad it's whatever you can't do anything about that so you're going to move the depth up and down and then this one just moves you horizontally they give you an example of how that works but i think we can pretty much do that and then the answer to this question is your horizontal position uh multiplied by your depth so let's get into how we do that so I'm going to actually skip showing you some of the things that we're doing up here first and instead sort of show you the result here instead and we'll work backwards. So once again, we read in our file. Our file looks something like this, just exactly what you'd expect, the command and the number on different lines, and then you're going to do stuff. So we read this in and what's very cool here, right, is we use generics in the last one. Recall from video one, last time we used U32 here. But this time we're going to do something we're actually going to do in our own personal type, right? And this works just fine because all that we need to say is this T must implement from stir. So how do you do that? You might ask if you don't know that much about Rust. Let's do an example. First, we create an enum. This enum is really nice because we just make the three different kinds of commands. And this means that we'll always handle these commands when working on things. And each of these commands sort of holds this value with them, which is just a U64 value, okay? You probably didn't need to use 64, but I made the numbers bigger in case the multiplication was really big. I don't remember if it came into play or not. Rust would just crash on you if, if, uh, if it came into play, so it doesn't matter a bunch. But what we can do is we can actually import the standard stir from stir trait here. We can implement this for direction. Um, and the way that you can do this, you can sort of ignore this air stuff if you don't know much about it. Uh, I use this little crate called Anyhow. It's not really a little crate. I mean, there's like a billion things in it that I don't understand at all. So don't ask me how Anyhow works. Which I'm sure by saying that, every comment is going to be, how does Anyhow work? Okay, I don't know. We'll come back to it maybe in a different video. I'm not exactly sure. Regardless... Uh, this error is sort of like a catch-all error, and it makes it a little bit easier to do simple error handling when you don't really want to write out all the different cases. Totally fine. But anyways, so I just say what type it needs to be. But the real business happens in here where you implement this function from stir, which is part of the trait of from stir. So basically it says, hey, you have to implement this function, and it's got to look something like this. Okay. And what's cool in here is so we get this string. Each of these strings is just the line itself uh, because we already split before, right? And what we do now is we can split the line once on a space because if you recall again from our day two, or sorry, our two dot input, it's just command space thing, right? So we've got space. And so this actually returns a tuple, an optional tuple. It might not return one. So you have to check for that. But the left and the right parts of the split once are in the zero and first spot and we can use pattern matching which is pretty cool to get the direction and the distance straight out just from this so you can pull those out and then i did i just did this where i parsed this distance and it knows that it needs to be a u64 or whatever type i would put inside here to put it inside of these enums and we can match the different directions on these strings. And for match statements, you always have to list all the possibilities in Rust. So this is basically the catch all, everything at the end. It says, hey, okay, well, if you didn't match one of these things, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna panic. I would wrote panic. I could have instead returned an error or something like that as well. 
But in this case, this seemed appropriate because I was pretty confident I wasn't going to get anything besides forward, down, and up. And I wanted to just crash if that happened. So anyways, now we return this result of a direction. And what that means is because we implemented that for direction, we can actually just pass that to our same thing. We can iterate over it and bada boom, bada bing, we've just got ourselves a list of directions or a vector, if you will. And we're going to iterate over that. So that's part one. That's the cool part, I think, of getting sort of this enum some type business using Rust types and generics to put those inside the vector and keep on working. You could do this for any type for any of the days as well. And we'll probably see this more as we go on further. Following that, what do we want to do, right? What we want to do is we eventually want to find the final distance. So I made a new a new struct called a location. And this location basically just has three fields. This one's for part two can ignore for part one. Uh, but as I said in the first video, I love solving it if I can with basically the exact same code. You know, if I can solve both parts with basically the same code, it makes me feel really good. So we're only concerned with distance and depth here. And what we do is we use fold, which is kind of like, I think, reduce or something like that in JavaScript for you JavaScripters out there. Um, I completely disavow you as a 100% pure-blooded rustation now, but that's beside the point. So we make a new location. We drop this guy in here. And basically, this is our initial value. And whatever we return from this closure here, this little function, uh, this is the syntax for arguments for the function. And then since it's only one statement i don't have to add extra curly braces because we're just going to return whatever the result is from this but basically this location is whatever we return from this and it keeps on getting passed back into the function for each of the different locations so we have a direction here and we can match on each of the different direction commands i guess would be the name that i would say and we pattern match on those and this handles every single case if we didn't handle one of the cases let's say we forgot to do this We'd say like, oh no, missing mash arm. So we know that we've handled all the cases. This is one of the cool bits I think about using these enums instead of just trying to remember to do forward, down, and up. Uh, Rust compiler checks you on that. So then what do we do? We create a new location on each of these. We do whatever sort of the thing that we were supposed to do according to the prompt, which for this one is distance. We just add the distance every time. For down and up, we appropriately do plus for down and minus for up, which is, I know exactly the opposite I've said. I, you're going to get tripped up on it one time. Don't feel bad. Your answer will be wrong and you'll flip the signs and then you'll be set. And then you can sort of do this unpacking. I think that's the right word. I actually don't remember if that's the right word or not, but you unpack your previous location into the other fields to keep that state. And then at the end, we just call answer on location, which is just self.distance times self.depth. The reason I wrote it like this is purely because I want it to be on one line because I think that makes me feel good for AOC. So I tried to do as many as I could on one line. No other reason beside that. Sure enough, after we do this, this applies everything that we needed to do for the prompt and we get the correct answer there, which is 1507611 for me. So that's part one, okay? I think... I think the cool bits here, just to reiterate, is implementing from stir for this direction, which lets us do this. I really like that. And then the other cool part is using the match and the fold here to basically smush all of the directions effects into one location. Really, it's just called folding it in. But if I use the word fold in the definition fold, it feels kind of confusing. Then we get the answer. So that's it for part one. For part two... Super similar, super similar. The only thing now is that we added this idea of aim and down and up basically just changed the aim and forward X, instead of just moving forward, it moves your position forward and increases your depth by whatever the aim is times X. So very similar. I think you'll, you'll all see very quickly what the difference is here. We just changed. So compare here distance, we just do loc times distance plus distance, right? But in this, we do loc distance plus distance. And we're going to change the depth by taking the current depth and adding distance times the aim. And then down and up just change the aim. And then we fold those up into the same exact thing and do answer. So this is very, very, very similar to the idea that we had last time. Ultimately, we probably could have pulled this into one function and passed in some argument that's a closure but I don't find that super useful. I think this is really clear what's going on. 
So this is kind of day two. That's the solution. We started to use a few different Rust features. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, leave something in the comments. If I know that you're actually not going to leave a question in the comment because you're just going to ask me how anyhow works. Okay, whatever. That's it for day two. I'll see you all later. Bye, everybody.